What is going on, everybody? It's the Frost, and we're here for our Monday Night Raw review. The night that everybody's been wondering how, what WWE would do, as this is a special night. The first show inside the brand new UBS Arena. The same show, the same event, in the same area, that AEW is going to have their flagship show at next week. And final ticket sales for Raw... They were pitiful. AEW sold 8,000 plus tickets and still got another week to go. While Raw could not even sell 6,000 tickets to this show. So in the in the event of a war on ticket sales, AEW won this one by a landslide. And people are like, oh, it probably, probably, people, WWE stands like, oh, it's no big deal. It's, it's Long Island. It ain't even Madison Square Garden. Yeah, well... AEW outsold you at their home base in New York, Arthur Ashe Stadium. So how about you all just sit down and shut the fuck up? AEW won this again. AEW runs New York. WWE's stranglehold on New York has finally been lifted and just destroyed as AEW has come in and has started kicking their ass every time they come around. Now... On this show tonight, Edge made his return. He was somebody they advertised to try and get more ticket sales. Roman Reigns, The Usos, Big E, not Big E, I'm sorry, Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, Andrew McIntyre, if I'm correct, were advertised for the Dark Show main event. So if you were expecting to see them on Monday Night Raw on TV, you're fucking stupid. But they had Edge come back tonight. And you are all wondering, who is Edge going to go against? Who is his first opponent going to be? I would like to see, if I had to see pick somebody for Edge to wrestle, I would like to see AJ Styles. Why? Because AJ Styles is just that fucking good. And when you get AJ Styles back in the singles division where he should be, instead of being lumped together with this Omos character, who the Undertaker had the audacity to say, he is the closest we're going to get to Andre the Giant anytime soon. Yeah, no. Not even close. But... They chose the Miz, and the promo. And if y'all watched Wednesday night, this past Wednesday, we had a promo for the ages promo off between CM Punk and MJF. So what does WWE do? Well, they figure, hey, we gotta have our own version of CM Punk and MJF, but we're going to use. A, it's like, oh, MJF was called a less ma famous Miz. Well, we've got the real deal. We're going to have Miz return, and he's going to go on the mic against Edge and try and do their best, their best, to be MJF and CM Punk. And it absolutely failed. Terrible booking. The promo was absolutely atrocious. It just didn't work. I don't know what WWE and Vince McMahon are thinking. It's like, you have been embarrassed. People were talking all week of how great that promo was between MJF and CM Punk. And you come out here and you give us The Miz. Just because CM Punk mentioned how MJF is a less famous Miz doesn't mean I want to see Miz on my television having a promo battle with Edge. But that is what WWE decided to do, and it looks like we're heading towards day one with C with um, The Miz versus Edge, and I say no thank you. That is a waste of his time. Now, we started the show off. Seth Rollins comes out. He's dancing around. He's being his old jovial self. He says, we might think he'd be in a bad mood after last week, but he's Seth freaking Rollins, and no one can keep him down. Not Kevin Owens, WWE Champion Big E, or Finn Balor, or anyone else. Rollins is in a good mood tonight because he's got a secret. He's got some breaking news. He asks for a drum roll. He gets it, and he announces that it will happen on January 1st, 2022, at day one. It will be Seth Rollins versus Big E for the WWE Championship. Okay, then. I'm fine with that. That's obviously where they needed to put it. It doesn't need to be on a random episode of Monday Night Raw, like the Women's Championship match, which is happening next week, by the way. But you got a month 
to build for day one. I guess that's fine. I guess we can deal with that. No problem there. Uh, he says this will be the first day of the new year, the first day of, new, of his next WWE title reign, one that will be defining. He goes on and said, but out comes Finn Balor. Now, these guys supposed to have a match last week. That match did not happen as Finn Balor got the ever loving ace beaten out of him. And Seth Rollins left him laying for dead. Of course, Seth Rollins got attacked by a fan last week. Seth Rollins was smart enough to keep his cool and not beat that fan to within an inch of his life. But that is neither here nor there. And Finn Balor says, well, you got me last week. I'm getting you this week. He rushes the ring. He starts beating up on Seth Rollins, sends him out to the timekeeper's area. They're fighting all over the place. And then eventually... They are able to get things under control, and we have ourselves a match. Seth Rollins with Finn Balor was the match. It was a decent match here. Seth Rollins ends up winning with a elbow to the back of the head and a stomp for the pin of the win. Seth Rollins wins. Of course, he needed to. We get a replay. He how Rollins delivered a thumb to the eye at the end of the match. He celebrates and makes his exit. We see how Liv Morgan snap on Be on Becky Lynch and decked her last week. Rollins well, champion was taunting her. Of course, she comes to the ring. We're going to have ourselves a contract signing. Then we go to the back. When we come back from commercial break, and we see that Austin Theories comes into Vince McMahon's room. Now you know WWE is desperate for ratings, and people who are WWE shills be like, "The ratings don't matter. The ratings don't matter." Then explain to me why Vince McMahon is on TV for a second week in a row. Vince McMahon has not been on TV. All year outside of WrestleMania when he made it when he made he was the first person to come out Say welcome to WrestleMania. Where have you all been and then walk back in the back? But Vince McMahon has been at Survivor Series Last Monday night on Raw promoting a fucking movie using a fake egg and now here he is on Monday Night Raw once again for absolutely no reason Obviously they trot out the old man every time ratings are in the dump it's towards the end of the year, and they need something. They need something to get the young, they get the fans back, to get that high rating. So Austin Theory comes in. Theory asks him how he's doing, but Vince makes it known that he hates it when people ask how he's doing, and they really don't care. Vince mentions how he has an ear, an, an earache and an ingrown toenail. That's how he really is doing. Vince says that's that's phony crap, but what that that was what wasn't phony was last week's match with WWE Champion Big E. They take a look, back, big, a brief look at back at that with the Cleopatra's egg. Vince says tonight, Theory will sit in his office with him to watch the entire show, and we'll see if there was any surprises, and take a look and see if anyone expects the unexpected. If they do, how will they respond? He says if Theory, theory even ever steals from him again, he will kill him. And then Vince just has his little look of jokingness. Uh, so I guess Austin Theory is under Vince McMahon's wings in that wing now. Vince McMahon is going to mentor Austin Theory to be the best he can be. How long until Vince McMahon is gone? How long until Vince McMahon gets bored of this stuff and is gone? I know Vince McMahon doesn't want to be on television. But yet he knows when times are desperate and times are tough, they got to get him on TV. To make sure that they're not dying in the ratings. So, so what does this lead to? I don't freaking know. I don't really care. So, Lynch is in the ring. She gets introduced by Sonya Deville. Sonya Deville then brings out the um, challenger. They have their words. Lynch, of course, starts talking. She starts going. Um, she starts making fun of the fans, making fun of the crowd. The fact that this match is happening next week, wherever they're at next week, and Long Island, Long Island doesn't get this match because, you know, they don't really deserve a championship match. The fact that they're like the sports teams aren't the our hockey team sucks and all these other things suck. And it's like they are really trying to make us hate, hate Becky Lynch and nobody wants to boo Becky. I just don't understand why they continue to do this. Nobody wants to boo Becky. But then they always have a go out there and try and do something. Liv Morgan tells her to finally shut up for once. And makes fun of the fact that at Survivor, at the Survivor Series match was over with Charbot, Becky was in the back crying, emotional because of 
friendships lost and we come back and Liv Morgan is really she's like this portion I was like Liv is really healing it up right here calling her the like big time Vex could be a big time baby just laughing at her making fun of her like trying to get under her skin and like Liv also says Becky is the reason her friends are gone because Becky like her like her big bloated contract she like she lost her friends because of that. But her like Be Becky's friends are gone too because of her ego. Liv says Becky is nothing but a big bully. And the same thing she and she's the same thing she wants to despise. She's learned from Becky's past mistakes, and Becky isn't the same person she once admired. And Liv isn't the same person Becky left behind. Liv says she will not be Becky's number two and has learned from her past mistakes. And if she want if last week's punch didn't teach Becky anything, then maybe this one will. Goes to punch it, but Deville prevents that chaos. Becky defends her post match emotion and goes on about how Liv thinks she is what she is. Take this division, revealing that she pitched a 10 woman tag match for, for Deville, to Deville and Adam Pierce. And the teams will be Lynch, Piper Niven, Tamina Snuka, and the women's tag team champions of Zelina Vega and Carmella versus Liv Morgan, Bianca Belair, Ray Ripley, Nikki Trash, and Dana Brooke. Basically, the 10 women on the Raw roster. Seriously, I don't think there's anyone else on this roster who's not in that match. So, it's it's a 10-woman tally match. I really couldn't care. We just had Survivor Series last week. And now we're just like, well, we didn't get enough Survivor Series, so let's do some more. But it's not an elimination. I'm going to tell you, like I said before many times on here, on this, on this channel, I can't stand these multi-person tag team matches. Six men, six women is the highest I would really stomach. After that, it just gets too much. We seen that one with Lock okay, Bro last week. Riddle and Randy Orton are backstage. Riddle was ranting about channeling his inner Viper last week in the feet to defeat Dolph Ziggler. But he noticed how Orton hit the bro, bro Derek on Robert Roode and figured Orton would dress like him this week. Or at least ride his scooter to the ring. Orton says they're about to go into the ring for the title defense. So if Riddle thinks he will ride his scooter to the ring barefoot, then Riddle is even more brain dead than originally thought. He appreciates what Riddle's trying to do, but they don't need to dress up like each other to keep the titles. They just need to do more, be more ruthless than anyone else, and need to be 10 steps ahead of the competition. Riddle understands what Orton, but ask Orton to close his eyes. Orton does, and Orton puts a wig on him. Yeah, Randy Orton. Randy Orton is sitting there with a blonde wig on his head. And you get flashbacks of when Goldust put a wig on Oldberg's head back in 2003. This company just... Oh my god. I swear, this company is so stupid. Orton gives Riddle two seconds to take the wig off his head and he quickly does. Orton, Orton tells Riddle to never do that again and Riddle apologizes. They head to the ring. The Dirty Dogs versus Team RK Bro for the Raw Tag Team Titles. I honestly don't even know why this match is happening. Dolph Ziggler got beat last week. I don't remember. I don't recall Robert Roode winning any match against Randy Orton. Randy Orton hit with the Bro Derek last week, so I guess losing a match and then your tag team partner getting embarrassed too last week warrants a title match. I don't understand why this match happened. Champs come out, part, um, the other guys come out, we have ourselves a match. Decent match. Nothing much you can say about that. It won a good bit. RKO, I'm sorry. RKO on Ziggler, 1, 2, 3, that is that. Seth Rollins is walking backstage when Kevin Owens approaches, all smiles. Owens brings up Rollins' big news from earlier and says he's not the only one with some big news. He says, Adam Pearce has told him that if he can beat the WWE Champion in a non total match tonight, he will be added to the title match on day one. They both laugh, and Rollins asks if he has more any more jokes. Rollins can't believe that Owens can be added to his WWE title match at day one. Owens tells Rollins to go ask Pierce, and Rollins says he will, he will because Owens is a liar. No, Rollins is just a manipulator. As this show went on, it is clear as day that Adam Pierce never told him that. that like, <laughs> Seth Rollins basically just went and said, like, Kevin Owens basically just went out uh, out there and manipulated all of this to happen. He tells Seth Rollins that this happened. Then Seth Rollins would go to Adam Pearce. Adam Pearce, of course, would deny it. Sonya Deville would come in and go, you know what? That ain't a bad idea. 
and then everything turns around and boom that is the stipulation on this match tonight and that's exactly what happened seth goes to pierce pierce denies seth uh as seth is leaving sonya deville comes in she says it's not that bad of an idea and then seth comes back later and they pretty much make it official that if biggie wins tonight i'm sorry if owens wins tonight he will be added to the match at the pay-per-view. Edge comes out, back from break, and Seth Rollins approaches Adam Pearce, as I said. He talk, like I said, he talked what he did. Edge says the ring is in the ring. He's wrapping up his entrance to Big Pop. He says, this is the best job in the world. He missed everyone. Says he's back. We last saw him beating Seth Rollins, Helen Sellers at Crown Jewel. Now Rollins is the number one contender. He says, believe it or not, Edge, um, Rollins deserves because he's operating on another level right now. Tell me about it. Edge says if, he go, if he's back in, on Raw and there's a whole set of new opponents to sink his teeth in, like AJ Styles, Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, Big E. I'm sorry, Damian Priest, Big E. It's really exciting because everyone is wide open. Everything is wide open. And out comes The Miz, who was eliminated from Dancing with the Stars, what was it, three weeks ago? And now he's making his return a week after John Morrison was fired. That big, that, that, that Miz. That Miz, who, yeah, got a shot on a Wednesday night. And here they are to come out here to give us what they want us to think is a good promo. A good MJF versus CM Punk-like promo. Ladies and gentlemen, no. This was not even close. This was CM Punk MJF Super Light. This wasn't even CM Punk MJF Light. This was CM Punk MJF Super Light. Miss gets in the ring with his wife. Yes, his wife was with him. Good fucking grief. And then, like, they gave you the big return treatment. The press, the entrance, all that stuff. But they, but they left me off to do whatever. He says, Edge's career now a master living from big comebacks, getting injured, coming back. Meanwhile, Miz has been representing WWE on the biggest TV shows. I wouldn't say one of the biggest TV shows. Who gives a shit about Dancing with the Stars? Those reality TV shows just need to go the fuck away. That's all I got to say about that. Miz goes on about how he still works injured and always promoting WWE, but doesn't get the big return or pyro display. Or fan pumps when he returns, but when he, what really irks him is it pisses him off is that one of the biggest female superstars, his wife Maurice, is back. But he had to listen to Edge and how Miz isn't even on his radar of potential opponents. Edge pokes fun at Miz for his dancing with the star dancing. Miz says while Edge, Maurice says while Edge was busy chopping wood, her husband was being the most charismatic and entertaining on the show. Which she said very poorly. Maurice has never had the best English. Edge pokes fun at the Miz for his placement on the dance on Dance with the Stars. Miz says he was placed where he was did because the WWE fans forgot to vote for him. Miz goes on and says while he was dancing with the stars, well of course the WWE fans forgot because the WWE fans do not fucking care where you were at because we don't watch that shit. Honestly, I couldn't tell you. Like, I've never seen dancing an uh, episode of Dancing with Star because stars because I don't give a shit. And yes, I know Stacy was on there back when she was in WWE. She actually left WWE not too long after her appearance on there. Um, and I don't know if there's been anyone else in WWE outside the Miz and Stacy Keebler, but again, don't care. I just believe Miz came out and interrupted him because he the, that immediately put him into the main event picture. Edge could talk to him the easy way, the easy route, and get the fans to chant "Miz sucks," which they do anyway. Which upsets Maurice. Miz asks, "How dare you? How dare all of you?" In I, I am an era of fighting superstar and deserve respect. Not really. He says six months ago he was WWE champion when he was last time Edge held a title. Oh, that's right. When I when you were curtain jerking, the main the WrestleMania I main evented with John Cena. He says he was great in the ring and had a career most people would dream of, but Miz surpassed him a long ago. And in his opinion, Edge should have stayed home for good. Edge says Miz is right. He couldn't do this for much longer and his window is small, but he, he fought with every fiber of his being to get his window back. Edge says every guy in the locker room wants, roots, room wants to stand across from him to test themselves and there is, there is mutual respect there. 
something Miz knows nothing about and could have had, could had and could still have, but he comes out here and bitches and moans about him, what he doesn't have. Ed says little Mizzy must need a pat on the back. Ed says he will give Ed, Matt, Miz a pat on the back and goes about how Miz made it here. In the ring with him, coming from Tough Enough, worked the WrestleMania main event against John Cena with the Rockets Special Enforcer and won. And goes on about how he on with his praise with props for the Miz, saying he made it further and higher than anyone thought he could or would except Miz himself. As he thought, believed, and made it happen, Edge says a big difference between them is Edge fought with every fiber of his being to get his small window back, while Miz uses this to get the nor notoriety for his next endeavor, reality show, or dance competition while leaving his partners to get fired. Morrison, of course. Edge says Miz expects, res re expects respect, while Edge earns it. Miz takes his shades off and they stare each other down. He dares Miz to jump him. To do this right now. He drops the mic. Miz asks the fans if they want to see this and him, he and Edge dance. Miz looks like he's getting ready to um, tussle and then he's like, no. Drops the mic and leaves. Again, this was clearly WWE scene. Hey, look what MJF and um, CM Punk did. Look how great that was. Look how much praise they got. We're going to do the same thing here. And it just falls flat on their face. No. Absolutely fucking terrible. We saw the Street Props got the upper hand on Omos with a fire extinguisher last week. Sailor Shriver approaches AJ Styles and, Mid and AJ Styles and Omos backstage. Asking if AJ has any insight of why the Prophets use the extinguisher when he's wearing sunglasses and asks if that's some kind of joke. Cruel joke. Did she just ask about insight? AJ says they use the fire extinguisher because they can't defeat he and Omos. He's wearing sunglasses because... He, quote-unquote, can't see. He couldn't see his own reflection in the mirror this morning. This isn't funny. He almost even had to trim his beard. AJ says doctors aren't sure if AJ will gain his vision. AJ says the street prophet sprayed all kind of chemicals into his eyes, literally giving him the smoke. But that's okay because that's where the smoke, there's, there's fire. And he promises the prophets are going to get burned. AJ and Omos walk off. It's clear as day what's going to happen here. AJ Styles isn't blind. AJ Styles is just playing it out to try and get back at the Street Profits when he can sneak attack at the right time. And that is not going to work out as always. Alpha Academy versus the Street Profits. Montez is wearing sunglasses to mark AJ Styles as he makes his way to the ring. Typical, typical Street Profits. That's what they do. Alpha Academy are out. Out comes AJ Styles and Omos. Able, you know, Omos is able to guide AJ to the announce table because, of course, he can't see on his own. Sure he can. So, the majority of this match, we have AJ Styles on, on the commentary, commentary just being like, I can't see. I can't see, guys. I can't see. I'm, I'm, I wish I could see this. And having Corey Graves pretend, to, pretend to, think, to believe that this guy can't actually see. Okay. Okay. So, Ford's going up for a frog splash towards the end of the match. AJ, by some miracle, got his sight back. Gets up, gets kicked away. Ford hits the frog splash onto Cable. One, two, three. And the Street Profits are your winners. Did anybody in WWE think that that was a good idea? Hell, we go backstage and Vince McMahon asks Austin Terry what he thought of AJ's surprise. Terry says he thought it was pretty good. Vince McMahon says... It was horrible. You could see it coming a mile away. The prophets probably saw that coming a mile away. He tells Theory to be more attentive and look at him when Vince is talking to him. When you have the man who probably scripted that segment, scripted that entire thing, come on TV and go, that was horrible. What the hell are you doing? Yes, it was fucking horrible. Yes, everyone could saw it a mile of fucking way. And that's the best you could do for us? Come the fuck on. So, it's just kind of stupid how you have Vince McMahon backstage watching this stuff, watching his product, and just going out there uh, on TV in front of everybody and being like, yeah, that idea that we came up with, we're going to bury it. We, it was a bad idea. It was horrible. It, it doesn't make anything anyone look good. The fact that Vince McMahon, who obviously came up with the idea, is going to go on TV and just bury it six feet under. Terrible. 
See how Dana Brooke won the 24-7 title last week. Brooke is backstage to talk with Reggie about his experience of being the longest reigning 24-7 champion. I'm sorry, the longest reigning singular champion in, a, in that, cha that title's history. Apollo Crews versus Damian Priest. I don't know why this match is happening. This wasn't an open challenge. Anybody trying to say, well, it, well Damian Priest has open challenges. This wasn't an open challenge. They never mentioned it being an open challenge. Paulo Cruz could have had the open challenge last week, but he came out and said no. Why he said no is beyond me. Back for break, and Seth Rollins approaches Kevin Owens before this match gets started, and calling him a liar and teasing him over what Adam Pearce said earlier from about day one. Owens insists he's not lying, and he will be added to the WWE title match if he wins tonight. Rollins is like, oh, sure, sure, sure. Good luck on your match. I hope you win. And in a joking manner. And that is that. So we have this match here. And I don't know where they're going with this Damian Priest thing. In, part, in my opinion, it feels like they're going, you know, like, it, they're pretty much having to be like this two-faced type character. Or a Jekyll and Hyde type character. We got the cool, calm, collected Damian Priest. You see 95% of the time. And then you get that evil, sinister, pissed off Damian Priest who's going to go out there and fucking kill you if you piss him off. That comes out during the majority of his matches now. And I'm wondering if this is going to lead to Damian Priest turning heel, Damian Priest just becoming this evil version of himself completely. Of course... Aziz gets ejected from being side. Cruz and Aziz argue with the referee. Priest is seething as he snapped now. Hawks up, rushes back in the ring, and unloads on Cruz in the corner. Priest knocks Cruz in the apron, nails the south of heaven from the apron back into the ring. Priest follows up with the reckoning. One, two, three. And Damien Priest is your winner. The biggest thing about this entire, like, evil version of Damien Priest is how do you beat somebody like this? How do you have somebody go out there and can beat him? Because the minute he gets the rage in his eyes and he's going to like, he just wants to snap your neck. It's like he just goes out there and just kills everybody. Now, Seth Rollins approaches Tony Deville and Adam Pearce backstage telling him how Kevin Owens is still going around lying about the WWE Day 1 stipulation. Rollins thinks it's a bad look for Raw and they should do something about it. And then Pearce, Pearce is like, um, I'm sorry Pearce, but Pearce is like, um, about that. You brought it up. Tony Deville thought it was cool, good idea, and we made it official. So, of course, Seth Rollins is furious. Rollins rants about how the day one title shot in his match, and Pierce lied to him. You lied to me! You lied to me! And he walks off. Man, Mysterio and Dominic. Dominic and May Mysterio versus Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander, who was billed as the Hurt Business. Um, I remember when the Hurt Business were Dominic. I remember one year ago when the Hurt Business were the best thing on Monday Night Raw. Hell, we had Cedric Alexander and, Se and, and um, Shelton Benjamin out here call being called the Hurt Business. But there's no Bobby Lashley. And there's no um, MVP anyway. So, how is this the Hurt Business? They lasted three minutes with the Mysterios. And the Mysterios win with a double 619 frog splash to Cedric 1-2-3. This is the best you have for the guys who used to be a part of the Hurt Business. Mm, I just don't understand. <coughs> Ten woman match. Becky, Piper Niven, Too Many Snooker, and the Women's Tag Team Champions, Lena Vega and Carmella versus Liv Morgan, Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, Aunt Nikki Trash, and Dana Brooke. If you thought it paid one second to this match, you're out of your mind. It went way too fucking long. Tamina gets caught with the Oblivion. One, two, three. The baby faces win. Of course, baby, of course, Beck, he's not losing next week. After the bell, Becky immediately rushes to the ring and unloads on Liv. Piper Niven attacks Belair in the ring. Camilla takes out Ripley, sending her into the barrier. Belair with a big spine buster to Piper in the middle of the ring. The chaos continues in and out of the ring. Liv blocks the manhandle slam and drops the champ with the Oblivion in the middle of the ring. Kicks Becky to the floor and then stands tall in the middle of the ring with Brooke, Ripley, Nikki, and Belair. Becky rants at ringside wondering where her title is at. There you go. There you go. Obviously, Liv Morgan's not winning next week. 
if this was going to go all the way to day one in a match, I could say maybe there's a possibility they do something. But with one week turnaround, it's just not happening at all. It's not. Biggie is backstage with Kevin Patrick. I'm sorry, wrong one, wrong one. Vince McMahon and Austin Theory are backstage. Vince asks Theory if he thinks Becky's leaving expected them what happened, and he didn't. Vince says you have to expect the unexpected. Vince goes about it surprised in how he could get screwed if if a, if a real surprise is coming your way. And Theory understands. Theory is looking at the door of the room. If it, it, room it appears, and Vince snaps at him to stop looking that way. Biggie is backstage with Kevin Patrick getting ready for the night's main event. We go to commercial break, back to break, and we get another coming soon vignette for Via Mahan. Hip, it's like Via Mahan and Zaya Lee. We should just put wanted pay, um, uh, missing posters on milk cartons because we're getting these video packages for them. We've been getting video packages for them since the draft, and yet neither one of them have made their debut. So what the fuck's going on? We get a video package of Bobby Lashley and his dominance. I don't know where he was at. Kevin Patrick is backstage with Bobby Lashley. I mean, with Big E again. Patrick asks if there's any added pressure over Kevin Owens possibly being added to the day one title defense with Seth Rollins. Big E simply says no and walks off, but comes right back and says he fears no man and no, fears no Kevin. He understands it will be harder to retain if there, are two, if there are two challenges, but once he beats Owens tonight and rids himself of his duplicate and duplicitous scourge, It'll be he and Rollins, man versus man, at best, at day one. And best believe he plans to kick off 2022 with a bang by retaining the WWE title. And he walks off, off to the main event. Kevin Owens versus Big E. If Kevin Owens wins, then he's added to the day one pay-per-view main event. Well, the pay-per-view match. I don't know. If Roman Reigns isn't, def if Roman Reigns isn't defending at day one, then yes, this is the main event. If Roman Reigns is, day, is defending at day one, then this is going to probably be like the, cur the curtain jerking match. Just saying. Now, here we go. So, Seth Rollins comes out because you know this is his. Because if somehow, somewhere, Big, Big E loses, it's a triple threat match. So, Kevin Owens. It's really smart at the end of this. It wasn't... I, I don't like the finish for this. I think it's fucking stupid. But... You're not gonna pin Big E. It'd be stupid to pin Big E. Anybody would sit there and go, Oh, they should've just pinned Big E if you're gonna go this route. No. Why would you do that? However, I still don't like that. The way this went. But Kevin Owens is in this match. Seth Rollins is on commentary. He's cheering for Big E the entire time. Kevin Owens actually goes over... He has Big E on the ropes. He goes over to Seth Rollins and starts beating him up. Gets back in the ring, almost runs into a big ending, gets off, out of that. And then Seth Rollins, who, if he would have just kept his cool, would have had a one-on-one -on -one match at day one. But he takes the bait, runs into the ring, beats up Kevin Owens, and when in the match gets, that gets awarded to Kevin Owens, as Big E and Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins will now be in a triple threat match at day one. And of course, Big E's, I'm sorry, Seth Rollins is not happy. And Big E's like, I got you! I got you! Obviously, this is going to be Kevin Owens' last big thing that he does in WWE. He's going to put over Seth Rollins or Big E at day one. He's going to be the one to take the pinfall to crown the champion Whoever that is, whether it's Kevin Owens or Big E, or um, not Kevin Owens, it's Seth Rollins or Big E, and that's all you can say about that. So that was your Monday Night Raw review. Monday Night Raw fucking sucks. The sad attempt they had at trying to mimic or copy uh, MJF and CM Punk was just sad. It's absolutely sad. But that is your AM Raw review. Hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like or dislike this video. Find me on Mods at the France Club. Find me on twitch.tv slash the France Club. And find me on Instagram at the France Club. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday for good wrestling. Where Brian Danielson looks to kick in Allen Five Angels' head on the way to his match with Hangman Page. Until then, my name is the France, and I'll see you guys later.